So I'm just going to show you how to get this horse coming towards you. Um, unfortunately I can't print it very big, um, but I'll send it to you. So let's just go back into the same principles looking at these shapes, but what happens here with it coming towards you is everything overlaps. So if I try to visualise the, the main torso shape as a sort of an egg here. Let's zoom into it a bit so we can see better. Um, what happens if we visualise this as an egg is that the hindquarters can overlap this, the forequarters overlap it. In fact, they probably, probably just about touch. If you were to draw a circle around the hindquarters and a circle around the forequarters, they just about come together with the shape of the belly here connecting it up. So let's see if that, that's about right. And then we've got the neck coming from the back of the neck here, coming from about halfway between the front and back of the horse. And the front of the neck just set in a bit. So we've got this shape up here. And the Again, the face is not going completely to one side, it's it's half overlapping the neck and we're getting a little bit of the muzzle just in here. So quite an overlapping shape. I'll come back to that, see if that can get that to look about right. But, um, maybe I'll just put a bit of shape in here so you can see what I'm looking at. A lot of very sharp angular shapes in a, in a horse like this. So it's finding those points, those little angles that will help you get the thing looking um, as you want it to. Um, bring that here into there. So let's get the movement through the legs. And I think I'll take the back leg that's straightest first. And if you continue the line of the neck through, it seems to come into the front of this back leg. So let's just go over there and see if that works. And again, how far down does it go down to the hoof? Fetlocks, by the way, as you draw, you draw the little joint at the top, you draw a little shape going in and out again to fit the fetlock. I'll do it on each of them so you can see happening this back leg here going right underneath the, uh, the, the rear quarters so if you've got the top of the horse here curving right out back leg and coming in and just crossing over in front of the other one quite tricky to get this spot on but again if you look at the position of all the different joints you should be able to ultimately gauge how they overlap. And if you can do it freehand like this, I think you'll get a nice sort of flowing set of shapes, even the tail flowing back here. So again, a little fetlock top joint moving down into the hoof. Let's draw this one now. You can always look at these joints, just like you look at stars in the sky and look at their relationship. You know, where is one star relative to another? Is it to the left? Is it to the right? How, how far, etc. Is it? And once you get all the relative positions, then you can hold up a vertical, you can hold up horizontal, and that should help you get the correct position of them all relative to you. To each other. We can also look at this space. I think I've probably left a tiny bit too much gap here. Um, perhaps I've brought, I think I've, ah, that's because I brought this leg up at slightly too high an angle. But I don't think it's going to um, be wrong, as it were, in terms of the overall proportions. So this knee up here, straight down. Hang on. Got to get this height right, yes. So these, these hooves are at the same height. So let's just try to get some better shape into here. Thicker shape flowing in, into, the, into 
the joint and thinner. There we go. So we've got a horse that's definitely moving at speed, galloping towards us. So is it flowing? That's the key. That's the key factor. So we've done a horse. What about doing something quite different? I've got some very nice elephants. I've got a very lovely elephant here that's helping this lioness bring this little cub to a watering hole. Very famous photograph. I stole it from the internet. Here's another elephant reaching up to feed, standing on its back legs. Wonderful, isn't it? So we can do this one simply and then we can do the next one. So this elephant, if we need to get right into the middle, there's a big circle. It's more of a circle and an oval here. If you look at right into the centre of it, let's draw it nice and big. Right, I will need to zoom back out so you can see my elephant and my circle. So here's my circle. Hindquarters. Well, this is an interesting one. So we draw a circle here. The hindquarters just come out and tapered down like this. It's a sort of egg shape overlapping that. And the forequarters are a little bit the same. Coming So are we going to get the correct proportions here? This might be instructive though, just to take the height of the elephant from its spine through to its belly and compare it with the length from the hindquarters here so that the fur, that distance is the same as coming from the hindquarters to the back of the front leg. But to get right across to the chest, we need one and three quarters. So if this circle represents the depth, we need one and three quarters. So yes, that was, did you see how I did that? Depth there is one. One goes here, and that's going to be where the back of the leg comes in. And the three quarters is going to take us oh, one and three quarters, so it's going to take us actually just about there. And that's going to give us the, the depth. So we've got these simple shapes, and the fetlock very knobbly right up here. So let's just draw this shape. Let's just start getting this shape right. And then we're coming down here from the hip. And the part of this leg is hidden by the lioness in the foreground. I think we can work out, we can see where it reaches the ground. So let's get this leg in the front here. This will help hugely. I'm ignoring the ears, by the way. Try and get the basic shape in first. This leg is coming slightly back at an angle. And it's difficult in elephants sometimes to see exactly where the joints are because they're, they're not knobbly joints like in the horse and the alpaca and the animals I've been sketching so far and the feet come down pretty much in line with each other. The front legs just fractionally lower than the legs on the other side. Sorry, the, leg, the front as we see it, as opposed to the legs on the, 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 towards the back. So that's the front leg here. And we've got another leg here, and I'm looking at the negative space help. Actually, I've got to get that just tilted up a little bit more. So that leg doesn't come down quite as far. Just take it up a tiny bit. That's, there we go. And then the 
the front leg. And again, let's look at this triangular shape, this, this triangular shape, it's negative space in here. But also, let's look at where this line comes through there. I think that certainly, am I getting it wide enough? Maybe just a, yeah, very thick here, tapering down to, tapering down to the same sort of thickness as this leg, so okay, let's use the same depth. There. Just a little bit of overdrawing just to get it looking a little bit more convincing. And now come to the head and the ears. So we've got the head coming completely forward here, completely over here, top of the head, just slightly lower than the withers here. So we've got this big shape over here, and then we've got a sort of teacup shape going forward before we get into the trunk. Again, I'm looking at the the right the depth to get in the trunk, it's curling right round. So, let's start connecting things up. We, we need to put the ear in here too. Make sense of it all. So I'm looking at how much lower than the head the ear comes. And they're quite complicated, the little, these little subtle shapes, you know, where do you put the eye? I mean, again, just getting that correct position makes a big difference in to, as to whether it looks right or wrong. So I'm just looking at the shape here first, I'll come back to the eye. Shape of where the mouth goes. Very smiley elephant, this one. Where its tusk goes, and it's got both its tusks, thank goodness. Let's see the far one underneath this one. And where the trunk goes. So you notice in these, I've not drawn many of my demonstrations the same scale as the drawings. So I've been making some a bit bigger, some a bit smaller. And that's because I'm always using the size I start with as the reference for everything else. So again, I can take the measurement of the, this depth and I can count it through, seeing if I get the, the overall um, proportions right. Actually, this needs to go down a little bit here. So, I'm not, I don't think I've got this point grasped right. I think the, the sort of point of the top of its skull comes back a bit from where I had it. So let's go, let's just bring that back slightly. That's better. And then bring the eye. I'm looking again, you can divide this up into halves and then work it out. So I'm just going to bring the eye down. It's about there. And again, just check that all the shapes are in between. You know, you've drawn the oval shape, but we can look at the cheek now, we can look at the side of the, the face here, the shape of the trunk, that all these shapes line up as they should. So, um, and again, the negative space is, is useful. So we could draw our little lioness cup or line cup in here if we wanted to. Get the scale of it right. It's very cute. Uh, and we could draw the lioness as well. Let's just 
the lovely thing is how beautifully they're walking side by side. Um, I think I've got this a little bit too chunky here. So let's tidy that up. And I think we've got the main shapes. So we're done. That one is good. So I'll come back with some more in the next video. Thank you for watching.